get ready to, before the message, uh, go to communion, and I just want to give a few instructions. Some 2,000 years ago, Jesus went through some agony in the garden called Gethsemane. He knew that it was time for him to go to the cross, and the spirit was willing. He knew this is why I came to the world, but his flesh got weak, just like I was getting weak. Spiritually, we know what we ought to do, but physically, our flesh would fight the spirit. So Jesus began to sweat. He sweated, his sweat was as if there was drops of blood because he knew what the cross was all about. And I've told a lot of you this before, and I just want you to know what we're about to do here. The cross was a cruel way to die. For years, I used to wonder, what kills a person on the cross? Why do they die? Jesus didn't lead to death. It wasn't about that. It was worse than that. It was a Roman capital punishment. And they would nail you through the bottom of your hand. Uh, we might call it the wrist. They found out that when they nailed through that portion of your hand, there was a nerve there that the nail would hit and it would cause your whole body to go to sleep. You ever had your feet to go to sleep? You know, you can't stand and step on them where well, your whole body would go to sleep and your whole body would break out in the shower was just not all over your body. And they would nail you there and they, and they nail you against a real rough tree. It wasn't like what we see here, what we wear around our neck. It was wood that had been chopped. And, and the only way that you could inhale, you had to crush, you, you had to push your way up. And when you would push your way up, the tree would just tear your back into pieces. Jesus knew about this. Because crucifixion was a public scene. Jesus knew what he was about to suffer. And fleshly, he didn't want to go. And he went to supper and he told his disciples, this is going to be the last time that I'm going to eat with you. He said, the next time I eat with you, it's going to be in heaven. And you know, I imagine the disciples must have felt awful lonely. And we've had you for three and a half years, and now you think to leave us all by ourselves? And he told them, he said, uh, as often as you do this, you show forth my death until I come. In the 17th chapter, of 1 Samuel, you'll find a story that everybody in the world, even unsaved people, know about. Everybody know about David and Goliath. It's been preached a million times in a million different ways. But hopefully today that we'll be able to say something that would make you to be able to relate to the word. You see, so often we read about stories in the Bible, but those are their stories. We need to bring it home. How is David and Goliath's story going to help me in this present day? I won't read it. You can read it when you get home because it's a long story, but you know it anyhow. We're going to use a subject this morning. We know that uh, David had to face Goliath, which was a great big man. Uh, he was nine feet, nine inches tall. And the spear he had, the very head of the spear, weighed 20 pounds. And he had on a coat. The coat weighed 166 pounds. So he was a big, big dude. And everybody was afraid of him because he was huge. And the whole army of Israel was defied because of him. We're going to use for a subject this morning, your giant. What is his name? Your giant. I want to know what is your giant's name. And believe me, every one of us got a giant. Every one of us in here, we're going to face some type of giant. I just want to know what's his name. The giant that David faced was Goliath. But even before then, David faced a lion and David faced a bear. I want you to understand, David was the youngest of all of his brothers. Little fellow, cute. Didn't even, wasn't even hairy. They called him Rudy. But God saw something in David that he can use. And I want you to follow me. I don't want you to think about David. I don't want you to think about Wade Lewis this morning. I want you to think about you. I want you to apply this to your own life. Because all of you are little Davids. And you are facing some huge dudes or circumstances. David was a little fellow, a teenager. And never knew that they were coming on the poor side because uh, 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 the Bible talks about how uh, David was keeping his father's sheep. Didn't have very many of them, but he was out there one day and he was keeping his father's sheep. And, and, and David heard this bad, 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 
In my house. 
He took me down there. He said, Mr. Kerr, we found a picture. Mr. Kerr looked at me. He said, I ain't got time. He said, but Mr. Kerr, there's another story in this, your sister. Mr. Kerr, he gets no harm. Mr. Kerr looked at me. He said, but I'm more of a yard right now. He said, but Mr. Kerr, you ought to look at it. So finally, make a long story short, he stopped his track, took me down the Legion Field. He said, okay, let me see what you got, little boy. And of course, you know how it is when you're trying to impress. I was throwing as hard as I could throw. And he liked it. And finally, he said, boy, do you have a curveball? I said, yes, sir. He said, let me see it. When I threw the curveball, he jumped up. He said, yeah, yeah. He said, that's the one, that's one. What's your name, son? So the back of long story short, I got on the team. First team we are going to play was the team with the second best record in the league. And they laughed at me. They called me the baby, some of you remember that story. Got by that team. But then there's another team that come in town. And I want you to follow, I want you, look, I don't want y'all to just hear the story. I want you to remember the essence of the story. The next team come in town. Well, y'all, we were about the only one, I think we was on the bottom at the time. But there was a team called Slaughterfield Dodgers. They came in town. And they had a good team, I was waiting for them. I said, hey, we're gonna put these boys. But they had one friend. Remind me of Goliath. David on Goliath. I was five foot five, 117 pounds, and he was about six five, about 275, and huge. And he came to the back. And I noticed, because I didn't notice, I noticed all my teammates were getting way back. I said, he belonged to me. I wound up and I threw the ball, and Boo Man, his name was Boo Man. Boo Man swung. I heard something say, Pow. I said, oh my God. <laughs> the ball went, it would have been out of Yankee Stadium, I believe. He hit it so far until our son of Fielder, which was a track star, he was trying to get the ball about time he caught up with the ball. Oh, the old boo man was going around third base looking at me laughing. First in they leave us one nothing. Of course, I'm, I'm dejected now. So I go back to the dugout, I don't know nobody. So I'm sitting there all by myself. So my teammates came and say, they called me Pat Pat. Don't worry about Boo Man, he'll hit anybody. I love him, came and said, don't, don't, don't get down because of Boo Man. Boo Man will hit anybody. And finally the coach came over and put his arm around me. He said, hold your head up, son. He said, just get the rest of them because Boo Man is going to hit you. Uh, I said, that's so. I got everything in the game, nothing to lose now. You young folks, I, I really want y'all to hear this. Okay, they already told me if he hit the ball again, they have already told me he's going to hit anybody. But I said to myself, if I can strike this big rascal out, what a reputation I had. And I remember a big blue man came to the plate and everybody just got out of sight. I got two straps on that big rascal. And if I was excited, and he was looking at me as I was big, and finally with that third strike, I threw it past that rascal when that rascal struck out. He just stood there with the bat and just looked at me. And everybody was, yeah, I can't believe you struck out Boo Man. And all through high school, my name was Boo Man. <laughs> Even when they called the road, the teacher would call me, wait, Boo Man, I said, present. <laughs> what happened? I couldn't even took everything that they said because they already told me he could hit anybody. He's much too big for me. He's the giant. This is going to lie.
living witness of that in the negative sense. I've always wanted to be a dentist. That's been my life dream. I want to be a dentist. I want to be a dentist. So when I was going to Southwest, Brother Frank Gregory, he was real good in chemistry. I talked to him, he said, let's go. He said, I'll help you with your chemistry. Went, sit, and got the brochure. I want you to, I want you to listen to me. I'm all excited. I told my parents, I told my wife, I'm going to go to school, I'm going to become a dentist. We got the brochure, and I was looking through, and I was doing fine. Until I got to the part that said cadaver. I said, you mean we ought to work on the bed, though? They said, yes, you are. And I ain't no dentist today. <laughs> Because I couldn't see myself. I got scared. Because I was scared of dead folk. I can't work on nobody's mouth while they did. And got to see it because I let fear get in my head. Is anybody getting any help this morning? Is anybody following what I'm saying this morning? Can you see yourself this morning? Is there a Goliath in your life? Is there a blue man in your life? Is there a situation that you're facing today that you feel like you can't handle? Well, I'm here to tell you today that you can handle any situation. There's no such thing as a situation you can't handle as long as you've got God on your side. God will deliver the giant into your hand. God will deliver the situation into your hand. All you got to do is go out and face it, and when you go out, what's going to look bad? David looked bad stand up against that big guy. But he had God. Just go and know that God will deliver you. When we look at our families, what do we see? That situation that you're facing right now, that condition that you face right now, when you look at it, what do you see? Do you see what it is or do you see what it can become? Do you see what it looks like or do you see what it can be? So we got to stop looking at the circumstance. We got to stop looking at the situation. We got to start looking at what they can be. Uh -huh. Every one of us in here can be fixed. Yeah. You can be, you can be victorious for me. Everything. If you want to go to school, young folk, go. You can do it. It's going to be hard. I didn't say it's going to be easy, but you can do it. And someday you'll be so glad that you did. Don't let nobody tell you you can't do it. My sister Aaron, I'm sure, some of you teachers are here, I'm sure you can relate to this. Sometimes you get somebody, you see like they will never, they will never be nothing. My teacher told us when I was in the eighth grade, she told us we were the dumbest bunch of folks she's ever seen. <laughs> and I believed it too. She told me, you don't know nothing. And she told me, she said, empty wagon keeps up a lot of noise. Now you non country folk don't know nothing about that. But if you're riding in on empty wagon, you boop, 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 all over the place. And what she was saying was our empty heads kept up a lot of noise. And she convinced me, it wasn't until I got into 12th grade that I realized I can become somebody. I can do it. Went to college and then made nothing but A's and B's. Nothing but A's and B's in college. Went all the way through and nothing but A's and B's. Made the dean, made the president of this. And I thought about my mind would go back to the eighth grade. Well, Miss Burke told me I'll never be nothing. You see, we can't let folks get it out here. We got to stop believing this junk. You are somebody. You can be what you want to be. You got to tell yourself that I am somebody. We look in the mirror and we see a defeated person. You ought to look in the mirror and say, I see a champion here. I can be what I want to be. Whatever you want to be, go after it. And I guarantee you, it will come to pass. You are much stronger than you think you are. Now I want y'all to go home. I hope I made you mad. I hope I made you so mad you said, I'm going to go home and prove it wrong. I want you to go home and prove it. Okay, I'm going to do what that preacher said this morning. I'm going to try with all of my heart. And, and, and if I don't become something, I'm going to come back and say, I, and I welcome you to do that. But just put forth your best, and you will become the best. Your Giant. What is his name? What's your giant's name? Let's stand together.